people ask me, uh, in fact, I did a, a piece uh, that was a projection that was inside of a planetarium, and it was an animation piece. And one of the questions was, uh, did Sister Karen leave a big impact on your work? And I, I, you know, I'm looking at the person as they ask that question, and you know, I thought about it, it's like I could go into it because there's an audience here. And I just looked at him and said, no. <laughs> and he, he was silenced. And I said, uh, you know, she was a heavy smoker. So she's probably in that big ashtray in the sky <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, may, we, uh, may we ask about your interactions with Sister Karen? I called her a liar, which you don't call a nun in East Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. I thought she was a human being and you can speak the way you want to, but apparently, you know, you use language like that and, you know, it frightens people. Um, I think, you know, if you... I'll give you an example. I did a, a set for an opera in Boston. And I was invited to do this opera but as a set designer, I would have to work with kids. And because I like that educational component, I said, yes, I can. Uh, the costume designer was going to work with young people. Uh, the lighting designer was going to be working with young kids. And me as a set designer. Now, the um, director of that opera uh, I had never met before. I have, I've done uh, stage pieces where I've worked closely with certain directors and you just have an affinity you're always communicating with and having a relationship. You sit next to the director and you're watching things and you're whispering back and forth about different things. Oops. I forgot to turn off my phone. That's nauseating. Well, if you need to answer that, I'll no, pause no. the video. No, it's fine. Um, so, uh, I was brought in to do this set and work with teens. Uh, and the teens were great, uh, really enjoyed uh, working with them. And they noticed that I didn't get along with the director. It was a woman who, on my first conversation, I met her over the phone, and she said a few things where I just thought, wow, this is going to be difficult to work with a person that has this kind of mindset. And she came out of musical comedy, not really opera. So I kept on envisioning Bob Fosse kind of dance movements, or jazz hands, jazz hands. <laughs> And sure enough, that's what they were doing. <laughs> and I thought, this is something I really don't like. But I, was, I talk to my students openly and honestly, and they know, they can sense. You're not sitting with the director, you don't even have lunch, you don't even talk to the director. And I said, yeah, it's like, I think we have to put the show on, the show has to go on, um, but I, I don't particularly care for the direction that it's going. At Self Help Graphics, it was the same way. It was, yes, it's a place, but I just don't want to have any dealings with the person that is in charge of this place. Um, and with the opera, um, the kids, I think, you know, beyond just the thing called art and set design, you learn bigger lessons in life by observation. And that's how my teaching is in many ways. Is um, I will explain to them, have, sit around a table, talk to them about how something uh, or how I conduct myself uh, in a situation like this. And I, I'm kind of telling them about how, you know, sometimes when we have a job, when we work with people, it's called collaboration. We have to, in some way, work together. Now, as you all know, I'm not enamored by the person, so I'm not going to sit and 
say niceties and, and be um, you know, somebody that just mouths these things. It's like, no, I'd rather not say these things and just let their conduct their lives. And, and I said, you know, that's how you can maneuver your way through life in many ways as well, because there's going to be a lot of assholes that you run into, but you're going to have to deal with it in certain ways. And this is the way I've chosen, so I'm giving you an opportunity to watch this. And the uh, director comes in one day and says, I need a platform on the stage. And I just think it's a horrible idea. Horrible idea. And the kids, uh, where's it going to go? I said, well, it shouldn't go on the stage for one thing, because there's no room for it anywhere on the stage. And it's going to be an eyesore. And sure enough, the platforms came in, and they looked like an eyesore. And the students were like, oh, no, it messed up our set. And I said, yeah, shit, it certainly did. But she wanted this. OK, now, we can't change that that looks ugly. What do we do with it? We're not going to try to make it pretty. We're going to try to make it uglier than it already is. <laughs> Write that down in your little notebooks. <laughs> sometimes beauty is not the direction to go. Sometimes it's to go to ugly. Because sometimes if you go to the extreme of ugly, somehow it comes back to being beautiful again. So let's hit the road for ugly, uglier. <laughs> and we'll call it super grotesque beauty. So the kids are like, oh, okay, good, good, good. So we did the platform, it was on the stage. The director gets on the stage the night of the opening. There's a you know, big audience uh, in the theater for the piece, for the opera. And she's like talking about a great honor it was to be working with everybody. She was everything I'm not. And uh, you know, she was like talking about how great it was working with all so and so, the young youth. And, all of that, and I'm in the lighting booth, which is kind of a big room above, looking down at the spectacle with my students who are now working with the lighting designer. And then one of my students, and these are teens, these are high school students, one of them says, where'd she go? She had fallen off the platform that she had ordered. And all of the students and the whole audience goes, ah! you know how that big collective wave? She gets back up, she dusts herself up, she's wearing her best, you know, of course, it's the opening night of the show. And she gets back onto the stage, and the students open up your book. I've got a new word for you, karma. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to Sister Karen. <laughs> That gives you kind of an idea of how I dealt with the situation of creating art there. It was to disengage. It was taking something that you knew was very conventional, very conservative, and an idea that was already put in place and not agreeing with it. But I would continue to do it because I knew it would have repercussions elsewhere. Perhaps there is that young student there that sees the work and says, you know, this is, where's the... You know, the image of the skull head, whereas it doesn't have it. Uh, well, rock is creating a new language, a new visual language. So for me, that's important.